Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Old Testament, the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Here we hear about Hannah and say a very particular and special prayer to God. Hannah was deeply distressed, and she prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O oh Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a child, then I will set him before you as your prophet until the day of his death. He shall neither drink of intoxicants nor shall a razor touch his head. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. When Hannah wanted a child, she did something very appropriate. She prayed. Prayed for her child. She, she didn't just pray. She prayed near the tabernacle. She got as close as she could, could to that sacred place. And she prayed so hard, so long, so fervently that one of the priests that was there thought that she was drunk. That's how hard she was praying. Have you ever prayed so hard somebody thought you were drunk? I never have, but maybe it's something that should be on my bucket list and yours too. To be that wrapped up in prayer, to be that connected to God that people pass you and say, wow, something's going on with this person. Well, she did. She prayed earnestly, heartfelt prayer, long prayer, but she also did something else that we tend to do when we want something important. She made a deal with God. She said to God, if you give me a child, I will give him back to you and put him in your service for the rest of his life. Well, soon Hannah found that she was indeed pregnant. And once she had the child, she was true to her word. She, when the child was the proper age, she returned the child to the tabernacle so that he could serve there and serve the priests and the prophets that were there. <laughs> Hannah made really one of the most personal sacrifices of the Old Testament, giving her child over to God. Well, the story turns out well for both Hannah and Samuel. Samuel went on to be one of the most important prophets in the history of Israel. Two of the books of the Old Testament named after him, First and Second Samuel. And Hannah went on to stay close to her son all of his years and all of her years, uh, but she also went on to have a prosperous and happy life. It's a good ending for both of them. There are a lot of reasons today to remember the story of Hannah, but the one I want to focus on is the idea of sacrifice. Making a sacrifice. Sacrifices are absolutely necessary when we're in relationship with another person. Relationships work when both of the individuals in the relationship make sacrifices. And if it's in a, in more of an equal amount, the healthier the relationship is. Relationships require sacrifice. Communities require sacrifice. Someone has to do the work that no one else wants to do. Someone has to do the difficult jobs in every community. Community requires sacrifice, whether it's a community like a city or a neighborhood or a church. Sacrifices are required. And of course, nations require sacrifice as well. That's what Hannah did. And she did it for her nation. Her nation prospered because of her sacrifice. Samuel once again went on to be one of the most important prophets in the nation and steered the nation, guided the nation in God's direction and the direction God would take. The, the nation benefited from Hannah's sacrifice. And of course, our nation cannot survive without the sacrifice of those who demand it. Absolutely necessary. And on this Sunday, we remember those veterans and their families. We always add that. We always try to remember that. That any sacrifice uh, a veteran makes, it's also a sacrifice for that veteran's families. Our veterans have sacrificed. They had sacrificed years away from their homes and their families, where they wanted to be, where they hoped to be in any given moment. Many of them had sacrificed uh, their health, 
or their physical abilities. Others have sacrificed their peace of mind because of their service. That is the sacrifice they have made. Others have made the ultimate sacrifice. You mean the greatest gift, the greatest thing that Christ said, the greatest love one can show is the gift of one's life. Now, without these sacrifices for those who have served during war and during peace, our nation, our world would be a different place. We would not be as secure. We would not be as free. All of this coming about because of the sacrifices of our veterans and our family, their families. But we know that being in a family, being in a community, being a part of a nation requires sacrifice. But one thing, once again, we have to recognize is not just one person or one group can do all of the sacrifice. We cannot rely on our veterans and their families to make every sacrifice. We have to be willing to sacrifice for them. That's what makes this relationship healthy between our nation and our veterans here. What are we willing to do? What am I willing to sacrifice for those who have already shown their love for our nation, for us, for this church, for this community, for their families? What am I willing now to sacrifice for them? They've given so much to me. Surely there's something I can do in return. Surely there's something we all can do in return. Well, there's certainly needs that exists on this front. And let's start with the most dramatic, the most dire need. And that is that it is absolutely unacceptable, absolutely tragic that 22 veterans a day succeed in committing suicide. That is shockingly above the national average. 22 veterans every day. That's one veteran every 65 minutes. The numbers who attempt suicide are undoubtedly higher. And the number one group most likely among veterans to commit suicide are the youngest veterans. That is something that we need to address. And we are. The country is trying to address this in many ways, but it's something we should never, ever Ever forget that this is one of the great needs. It is also another need, and it's unacceptable, that the highest unemployment rate, there's a much higher unemployment rate among those who served, especially served during wartime, than those who did not. A much higher unemployment rate. And that should not be so. And again, the highest of those unemployment is among the youngest of the veterans, especially the veterans of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. When it comes to our veterans, this is something we need to be aware of. We need to know that this is a need that needs to be addressed. Here's another concern. Among our young veterans today, uh, Many of them, many as, as many as have ever, they take up uh, this wonderful benefit that's been around since the end of World War II of the GI Bill. And how wonderful that is that they're taking up that, going to college. But today, unlike in the past, 80% of the veterans are dropping out. 80% dropping out, whereas in the past, almost all of the veterans ended up getting their degrees. What are we to do about that? Well, today we have taken time in this service, and we will, as a nation, take time, and uh, hopefully in many different ways, to say thank you to our veterans. And that is wonderful. That is a good start, and actually it's something that should be done all the time, and not just one day a year, as many people do. They think veterans all of the time. But one thing we should ask if we want our relationship with our nation, among our nation, with our country to be strong is now, okay, they have made a sacrifice. What are we willing to do to deal with some of these, just a few of these, the many issues facing our veterans? Those are just three that I mentioned today. What are we willing to give? What are we willing to sacrifice? Those of us who made no sacrifice since 9-11. Zero. What are we willing now to sacrifice for those who sacrificed 
so much? Well, here are a couple of ideas, just things to think about. Uh, you can support a national organization uh, that is meant to help those veterans who have come back. There are many of them, and some are more reputable than others, but one that I have a close affinity for and, and love is the Wounded Warrior Project. This is wonderful. It does just focus on those, uh, those uh, veterans who have come back with uh, injuries and physical and mental disabilities. Uh, but I love their mission statement. Their mission statement is to foster the most successful, well-adjusted generation of wounded service members in our nation's history. That is a wonderful mission statement. And surely that is an organization worthy of a sacrifice, a sacrificial gift to this organization. That is a gift that you will feel, a gift that will make a difference. If you're looking for something closer to home, if you're looking for something not just to give to, but to do, let me point you to the Veterans Administration, right here in our own community. There is a service uh, program with the VA called the VA Voluntary Services, and it is the largest volunteer program in the federal government. Its volunteers are said to be our, of an essential essential to our veterans and they have a great make a great difference to our veterans and to the veterans administration and here's one more coming down right to our neighborhood right here just a few blocks north of us actually right on jordan there is woody's home for veterans and woody's home for veterans helps the veterans that it's really the hardest for so many of us to to be able to deal with, to be able to accept that this is a part of, for so many of being a veteran, that's veterans with mental illness. They, they want to give a place for veterans who have mental illness to stay. Now, half of the veterans who are homeless are homeless because they are mentally ill. And that's what Woody's Home for Veterans is, right here in our neighborhood, a safe place for veterans with mental problems to be able to come and receive counseling and receive a place to stay, but also counseling with things that they need and medical attention as well, and attention with all sorts of areas of their lives. And that is something, let me tell you what they, 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 they need at Woody's Home for Veterans. They, uh, they will accept monetary donations, they will accept clothing and shoes, they will accept you know, toothpaste and those kind of things, and uh, they also will encourage people to write the veterans letters. So that the veterans receive some comfort, some encouragement from those in our community. And those are all ways that we can make some small sacrifice for those who have given us so much. Our veterans have shown us. They have demonstrated their love for us, their love for our country. They have made a great sacrifice. Well, let's be sure that we do not just tell them that we love them. We don't just tell them we appreciate them, but that's just the beginning. We go on to make sacrifices of our own that make their lives better each and every day. Now, this is an important lesson, not just for Americans and uh, thinking about our veterans. This is an important lesson for every Christian. That being a Christian means being willing to make a sacrifice. You know, we have received the benefit of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. As Jeff said at the communion table today, we come to communion to remember the sacrifice that Christ died for us. And you know, it's tempting for us, it's easy for us to think that, well, what I need to do then in response to Christ's sacrifice is to accept Him in my heart and to be thankful our veterans. Absolutely important first step. Great first step. Absolutely necessary. Accept Christ in your hearts and be grateful, but then also be willing to make sacrifices in your life. To show, to demonstrate that you are a follower of Christ. <coughs> if you want a relationship with God that is right, that is true, then there must be sacrifices on both sides. We must never think that we can have forgiveness without repentance. 
We need to sacrifice and have repentance before we are forgiven. We must never think that we can have baptism without discipline, communion without confession, discipleship, grace without discipleship, and worship without making the sacrifice of an offering. A real relationship to God involves making sacrifice. Our sacrifices won't on their own qualify us for God's love. They don't get us there. It is God's grace that comes down and helps us to get there. But it is through our sacrifices, large and small, to God and to others, that we show we are disciples of Jesus Christ. It is through our sacrifices that we show we are ready to take up our cross. To take up our cross as disciples of Christ. And follow Jesus. And in this week ahead, may we find many opportunities to make some personal, real sacrifice for the veterans who have served us, for the country that has nurtured us, and to God who through His Son, Jesus Christ, gives us the opportunity to bring, to be His children. Give us the opportunity as well to bring glory to His name through our actions and through the sacrifices that we make. Let us bow. Loving God, we do give thanks that we have been given so much. Lord, help us to be able to respond to all that we have received by being willing to make sacrifices of our own so that others may be lifted up and helped through our actions. Loving God, help us in all of our relationships, in our lives, in our community, in our church. Lord, may all these relationships be equal as we can make them the sacrifices that we give and receive. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.